What's going on guys? It's your boy 4 in the morning, Cecil here. Bring guys a video here today. Bring guys a Photoshop slash Illustrator tutorial here today. Just gonna make something pretty much just like this. We're gonna be calling it Elemental Wave, I guess is the whole point of this like thing. If you guys don't know about the one minute banner design series where I take a really cool abstract style that you guys can basically, basically end up doing in one minute, I promise you guys that. And uh, overall, make a really cool concept and make it different every single time. And it's one of my favorite series personally. I know it's one of your favorite series. And uh, yeah, so I can't wait to show you guys. So we're gonna be starting off with the background in Illustrator and then moving on into Photoshop, in which I'm in the future. I wanna do this part over personally to make it a little more clear and less long. Um, so this is the actual version you'll see at the end of the video. So like, yeah, it looks, I think this one looks better than my original. So hope you guys enjoy. And of course, if you like the video, you can stick it down below and uh, most likely be the PSC. So I can't wait to show you guys and let's just get this thing going. It's one of my favorite so far because it's so, so freaking clean. All right, guys, so now that we are in Illustrator, I wanted to show you guys really quickly the uh, the other version that I pretty much had because it's most likely to get a better idea of what we're going to be getting and the end result. So as you guys can see right here, we're always going to be starting, uh, I guess, outside the canvas and also, of course, then leaving on the end point, I guess you'd say the, uh, the last anchor is also going to be at the outside of the canvas. And for me personally, I think it's pretty cool if you kind of like stay in a sort of middle uh, ratio and then slowly start kind of like filling your screen because it gives you more of like a really cool like wave kind of look. And uh, just so you guys know, the document size I'm in currently is file new, illustrator, please, thank you, is 1920 by 1080. So I kind of bit it uh, or did it in a simple sort of like, uh, of course, document, uh, excuse me, desktop size wallpaper. Um, of course, Illustrator, vectors, most things are gonna be in this size anyway, and I think it's gonna be working perfect for you guys, except if you're doing like headers and stuff like that. So I'm gonna show you guys now how to do this. It's very, 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 very simple. So I'm just gonna kind of mimic what I did here, and I don't even need it in my, like, I, you don't even need it in your sites. If you're new to the pen tool, this is probably even better because the more random it is, the more cool it is. Um, one thing I wanna mention too, I have not tried straight lines myself, and I know damn well they'll work, and I feel like one of you guys wanna be a little bit different, straight lines. So don't do curves, do straight lines just to make it look different. Um, okay, so we're gonna start off on the ends, like super far out of the canvas, because when we do the effect itself, you just wanna make sure it fills most of this canvas, and if you kinda stop like right here, you're gonna have like like a little bit of, uh, I guess, gray area space that you really won't be able to fill too easily. So I'm gonna go ahead and just literally click drag with the pen tool, click drag, click drag, click drag out, right? Very, very, very simple stuff. You wanna move this down, you can. And uh, yeah, that's our, gonna be our first one. So if you guys don't, if your pen tool does not look like this when you pen tooled, it's most likely, excuse me, I didn't mean to click that. It's most likely because you have your fill on, make sure you guys have your fill off. Uh, so when you click this little box right here, it's your fill color. You wanna take this third box here and just go none, simply just like that. And the stroke also just make it black. Of course, your background's white, just make it black. So you guys need to be able to see it very easily. And then that's gonna be our first little little wave line. So when you, of course, when you when you're, I guess you would say applying your next path, which I'm gonna do right here, right here. I'm just gonna just kind of like do like this, like this. Notice that I'm not gonna go over this line here. Pretty much never you're gonna go over the line at all. I'm just gonna keep doing it again. We'll make this one like super long here to kind of like speed that process up there, right? So I'm never gonna gotta cross these because once you cross them, you're gonna get a, you're gonna get a completely different effect, and it's not gonna be as clean and sort of like I guess flush. Uh, as the effect that you guys saw at the beginning of the video. And so I'm always just gonna keep a little bit of space. I mean, you can get really, really close if you guys want to. Getting close is not a problem. It's about crossing over, that's just a problem. And this might look super weird right now, but it's gonna look so freaking cool. And we're just gonna say right there, and I'm gonna do one more because why not? Okay, yeah, literally, it, you think I just kind of like went with it and just hope for the best? Exactly. Okay, so what I'm gonna be doing now is I'm gonna be using the A, I'm gonna be pressing the A, right? A is the actual direct selection tool, um, or selection tool, excuse me, not direct select, it's direct select, okay. Um, okay, so we're gonna actually click the first um, top path, and then we're gonna click the one right below it. So I'm gonna click on that one, just like so. I'm gonna hold shift, while I hold shift, it allows me to select two different paths. So I'm gonna click the one right below it, and then I'm gonna go to object, blend, blend options. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click on, oops, not object, blend options, excuse me. Ob uh, object, my bad, it's four, come on, like literally it's four, eight, eight, eight. Uh, object, blend, make, there we go. So the effect itself is basically taking two different paths and the one in the middle that you guys basically said it made is sort of like saying if you went ahead and just perfectly tried to like trace exactly in the middle and exactly around the distances, this is what you're gonna be get, uh, getting. So now when I go to object, blend, blend options, so you have to do make first and then do blend options. Right, and then you can click on the preview button, and then you can go to spacing, change it from smooth color to uh, specific steps, 
And once you've done that, you can send see the number one. This represents the amount of lines that are going to go in between here. So if I hold shift, actually, you don't have to. Um, you can just use your scroll wheel or put a number in. Like, you can just literally just scroll wheel. But if you hold shift, you'll see that the intervals go by 20. Or, excuse me, 10. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say 30 looks pretty good. I love the lines in there. We're done with that. We're pressing OK. So... Of course, when you guys saw, we clicked the first one here and the bottom one here that filled this space. So, of course, to fill this space here, you're going to have to click this path here. The mistake you're probably going to end up making is you're going to click this path, you're going to click this path, you're going to go to Object, Blend, Make, and then it's going to look really, really messy, really choppy. You're going to get a completely different effect. So, before you end up doing that, you have to do this little quick little reset. So, what you end up doing is you click on this path again. You go, uh, so in Illustrator itself, you have, like, if you select a path, which I'm going to do right here with the A, just the, uh, the direct selection tool, right? I'm going to select this one. I want that one, okay? Over here, whatever color of your pen tool path is, the line, whatever, it's going to be a different color every single time, right? You're going to be able to see a little pink. It's going to be pink here. I'm going to drop down. You're going to see it's pink here. Drop down. And that's exactly how you basically find anything that you select inside Illustrator. So what you want to end up doing is you want to make a new layer, okay? Then you want to take this path. You want to hold alt on your keyboard this is the way to make a nice little duplicate and you can hold alt and drag it right into that new path or that new layer excuse me and now you're going to basically have a secondary path over the original so that's what you basically want so now what you can do is you select this little circle here this is a target selection so it's going to target that one thing inside or basically everything but in this case is one layer or one path inside that layer and then, then i can select the one below it and then i can do object blend make object blend blend options just like so preview uh spacing steps and i can hold shift and go by numbers that i want and i'm gonna say 50 is pretty good but i'm gonna press ok as you guys can see here it's a little bit messy so if it comes to this you can really just use your direct select tool again which is a on your keyboard and then just kind of move things around until you kind of find what doesn't give you that issue sometimes you have to move that and then i'll probably have to move this but that'll be okay and uh yeah now we have those lines there too so of course i'm just going to basically kind of speed this part up so i'm just going to do these over here it's the same exact steps and i can do it really really quickly so i click on this one i find this one i find that path i make a new layer take that path put it in that layer select this circle select this one go to object blend make object blend blend options preview steps and just like so now i'm done i would say 40 is pretty good for this press ok so i'm going to speed up and do these last two and i'll just show you guys at the end All right, so as you guys can see, I basically went ahead and kind of just finished this all off for us. So what the whole thing is, is every little path that you guys did, when you made duplicates and whatnot, you're always going to have two different paths inside each blend. So you can see two different paths inside each blend, as long as you, of course, followed the way I personally showed you guys, right? So in order to kind of change around and make it look pretty cool and kind of like make it look, I guess, cohesive and like a, a one tire thing, I like to change the, I guess, the weights of the actual strokes. So I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to make a new layer. And I'm going to take each and every one of these blend paths, right? Control click on them. That way I can select both these layers at the same time. Hold Alt in my new layer. I'll drag it right in there. So I'm going to take each of these paths by holding Control, click on both of them. And then I can go ahead, drag it in while holding Alt to make a duplicate of them inside here. So when I have this, okay, it's kind of like giving me a reset of kind of like all of the different paths that we just used without messing with them. Because if you were to drag the blend paths out, if I just kind of showed you guys, it'll then go away, right? You don't want that. So now that those all are in one thing, we're going to call this the original paths or whatever, right? Then we're going to make another new layer, and we're going to put all of these, which is the blend modes, inside this one. We're going to call these blends. Simple, right? So what I'm going to end up doing is I can take the blends, take this target circle. So I'm going to select, it's going to select every path in here, just like so. Then you can go to this little three dashes here, or windows uh, stroke. Then you can put this to like 0.3, just like so. I'm going to have 0.3 lines. That's pretty freaking good. And, uh, okay, I'm going to go ahead and go now to the original paths. And I'm going to put, like, 0.6-ish. Might be a little more thicker, right? All right. So 0 0.6, 0 0.5, you can go, like, 0.2. You can go as, like, low as you guys want. I'm going to, I think I'm going to stick with this. And I think this one right here is going to go to, if so, also, so if you see, like, this one has a lot less than everything else, I can select this, go to options, go to blend, go to blend options again, turn on the preview, and I can go ahead and fill in as many as I want and fix things. So 
Once you guys are satisfied, satisfied with the weights that you guys basically want, you can then press V in your keyboard, which is the actual direct selection tool or, or the selection tool itself. So if you highlight everything, you can simply, if you have Illustrator and Photoshop open right now, or then you would have to then go ahead and use file, export, save for web, and then save it as like a PNG 24, and then throw it into uh, to, um, Photoshop. But if you, if you want it to, you can just, really just take the entire thing while it's selected, put it right into Photoshop, and you guys will be left off to the next part that I, you guys, that I, that I gotta show you guys. So basically, control T, make it bigger. And now we're gonna have this right here. So what I, what I ended up doing, excuse me, was leaving off right basically at this point. So I can't wait to show you guys now. And uh, let's just go ahead and get this thing going for you guys in the Photoshop part. All right, guys, so now that you have your pattern inside Photoshop and all that cool stuff, the first thing that I'm doing is basically changing your color so it's not super, super, super white and kind of like too stand out-ish. Uh, stand out -ish. What we're gonna end up doing is I'm gonna double click on this layer here. We're gonna open up our pattern layer. We're gonna go to our layer styles and we're gonna go to gradient overlay. Now I'm gonna give you guys my little nice little gradient that I have and I use for today's video. Now also keep in mind before I actually show you guys that, the background color that I actually have is not completely black by the way, it's hex code 030. 404. Now, if you put that basically in this box right here, those numbers I just said, or you copy them down and put them inside your um, your color picker, okay? And if you guys were to go ahead, and if you've been in a new layer, and you press Alt Backspace, as long as you change that color with your foreground color, you just basically press Alt Backspace, or if you guys really want to, you guys can just go ahead and like use like a like a like a rectangle marquee tool or make a new layer and use like color overlay or something like that. And let's put that color text in, but I like to just give you guys the Alt Backspace quick shortcut for you guys. Um, and you guys will have the same black that I obviously have, right? Or black, I guess you would say, or a dark green. It's really, really a dark green. Um, so go ahead, I'm gonna open up this new layer, go to my gradient overlay, like I said before, and I'm gonna use the gradient, this nice little simple black, almost like I, I would say grayish tone to an even lighter grayish tone, okay? So on the left-hand side here, your gradient here, you're gonna have like basically either black and white on the other side for your default. On the left-hand side, you just wanna simply just take this hex code 14171C. It's a nice little bluish kind of tone. Um, press OK. And on the right hand side, you're going to have a basically a nice little gray. Let's just double click on it again. And this one is 878787. So, in any other point, you guys want to make it like lighter, make it even darker, you want to make it really dark or have a little bit of color in there. You can have a lot of, like, ooh shit, that looks pretty dope. Um, you can have a lot of fun with this, I promise you. I, I was exploring, I was personally exploring with color, but I made it more, I guess, easier for my, like, mental to not be freaking, like, ridiculous about what the colors I'm using, um, to just use gray. So I ended up using gray. And gray is perfectly fine for me. I'm gonna go ahead, once you have that gray selected, it's actually gray, not blue, right? Press OK, press OK again, and now you have your background set to be like just simple and successful, right? This is literally pretty much all I ended up doing for my background, besides a couple things that I personally wanted to kind of make it spiced up. And now for the whole spiced up part, I'm going to go ahead and press Control J on my keyboard, which will make a duplicate of that original text pattern, right? So this is going to be called the blur pattern, this new duplicate, okay? So in this new duplicate, I'm going to go to Filter Motion Blur, uh, excuse me, Filter Blur Motion Blur. Okay, so my motion blur here, my settings I already have is about, I'm gonna put negative 70, just for the sake of OCD, and my distance, I'm just gonna put 10 for the sake of my OCD. So negative 70 angle, 10 pixels, you can see the preview on and off, it's kind of just blending them in and making them look really, really, really smooth. Now, if motion blur is not your thing, or you don't want the smooth lines, you want really hard lines, don't do this step, right? That's perfectly fine. So my motion blur settings are set, I'm gonna press okay, and then I'm just gonna turn this off for a second and kind of leave that be for a quick second. Okay, so my original pattern here, I'm gonna go ahead and press Control J again. So I'm gonna have another pattern. This is gonna be called Pattern um, Two. Sure. Okay, so Pattern Two and Original Pattern, I'm gonna both give these guys a layer mask. So if you guys know what layer masks are, it's what I end up using when I want to basically erase and get uh, erase and put things back. So if I want to take a brush here, if I use a black brush on a white background, right, you'll see that it actually erases, right. You'll see it erases here. Now, if I turn that black brush to a white brush and I'm on this layer mask, if I just use the white, it'll basically fill it in. So what I personally like to end up doing is I like to take my brush settings. On my opacity, I like to put around 40% for a second. So what 40% opacity means on your brush is you have to click, I guess you would say two and a half times in order to get to like a 100. So if I click once, it's only really gonna be erasing with a white, uh, with a black brush, excuse me. 
if I click and hover over once, you'll see that it's actually, it did get erased, but it's only got erased about 40% of its original 100% opacity. So if I go over it again, that's 80. If I go over it again, you get some more of that 100. If you guys got to keep going over it for it to actually go away. So this helps you guys control the amount of blur or the amount of, excuse me, the amount of times or obviously the amount of erasing you are doing on the actual pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this back in really quickly. If I press control backspace, it'll quick fill a white in, which is basically like reverting back to the, the, the picture being clearly seen. If I do alt backspace, it'll get rid of it just really quickly. If you guys didn't know that, um, cause no matter what, when you actually select whatever colors you guys have, I can have like red and blue. When you have a layer mask, it automatically changes to black and white. So you have to worry about actually changing your colors. So with all that explanation done with your layer mask here, you take your black brush right with 40% opacity and just give yourself a nice cool little way of like erasing a few spots to kind of like highlight more of uh, I guess you'd say more of the kind of like playing with the depth a little bit right so some parts are going to stand out more than others right so I'm going to kind of erase this here can erase this here and I kind of more more little parts are going to stand out more so to end up doing this pattern two here you can turn that on then you can turn this into a nice little layer mask just like so and then you take your black uh, brush again Okay, I'm just gonna go in and say, hey, I'm gonna kind of do this one more time. You can have fun with this one. If you wanted to, this layer here can be a different gradient, right? So you can have a little bit of color in there mixed with a little bit of gray. And I just kind of like to do this, just kind of like highlight a different little spot. So you can see that it's just not purely just a simple pattern on top of each other. You kind of kind of have fun with it a little bit more. And then of course the blur pattern, I turned it off for a second. I'm gonna turn it on now. And for this one, I'm gonna of course throw on that nice little uh, layer mask. And for this one, I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna erase a few spots. I'm gonna put my opacity up to like 80% or so, so I don't have to erase so many times. Not eight, AD, enter. Right, I'm gonna erase a few spots for this. So I'm gonna have only certain sections have this really cool little blur to it, okay? And I think this looks pretty good to me. Okay, so we had just have a few little spots that are kind of highlighted all in different little layers. Now, if that was a little bit too complicated for you, that's perfectly fine. You can just use your original layer without having any layer mask or any erasing going on and just leave it as so and like just basically have this pattern be like this, right? Where you just had it before. Where you kind of had just a good old background pattern. That's it, you can leave it like that. Don't worry about it. This is more of like a quality thing for me. And if you guys want to choose to do so, you guys can, of course, you know, mess around with it as well. I'm gonna go ahead and turn these back on. Okay, so now that this is done, I can go ahead and take my logo, which I actually need really quickly. Let's just drag that in here. Okay, cool, I have my logo set now too. Now for the little quick little text effect, by the way, I'll show you guys really quick how to do that as well. The actual font that I actually used for the whole, um, the word element, right, was actually Cool Vetica, which a lot of you guys might already have. It's a free font. I'm using it quite a lot recently for some odd reason, have no idea why. And let's type in the word element, waves, period. Okay, we're gonna make this white. Okay, just like that. There we go. And now this font just really complements this really cool look to it. So with the word element waves, okay, as soon as you guys spell out your, whatever name you guys want to have, press Control J and just leave the other one that, 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 that uh, I guess the original, just uh, like hide it, right? So that way if you ever have to go back and fix it, you guys can. Because what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to right click on this text effect and click rasterize type. Okay, so I'm going to take my pen tool now. I'm going to go ahead and just make a simple little kind of slash going through the, the, the M and the E here. Whatever letters or words you guys have, just kind of have it go through maybe like the first two letters or three letters, depending on how short or big your word is. Okay. With that being said now, I'm going to press B on my keyboard, which brings up the brush, by the way. So I'm going to click on the brush or press B on your keyboard. Right click, make the size 2. And also basically click on a default brush, right? Make click on a default brush. Yours might be a soft brush, it's perfectly fine. As long as it's one of the default like two brushes, the soft or hard, uh, hard brush, you wanna make sure you guys change your size to two and the hardness to 100%. And once you guys done that, you guys can make a new layer, press P on your keyboard again, right click with the pen tool, um, tool, and then click stroke path, then use drop down brush, okay? Press okay. Press OK again. By the way, when you press OK again, it's gonna take the color of whatever your foreground color is. So right now, if I press OK, you'll see if I delete the path now, uh, which I don't delete the path, by the way. I'm just showing you guys, right? You see this nice little blue line here. We're gonna change it to a different color if you guys want to later on, just by simply using a color overlay, right? So but without, without deleting the path, basically reselect one of the sides of the pen tool, okay? Right, one of, the, one of these little anchor points. Go around it, okay? We're gonna go back to our original layer here. We'll select that layer right here, right? That, that text layer. We're gonna right click, make selection, press okay. 
Then we're gonna use the rectangle marquee tool right here, the second tool. That'll give us the option to when we right click to layer via cut. And that's what you want to end up doing is so you're going to have the element waves copy here. And then this is going to be the E L E M right here. Okay. Right. So L E L E M. And then the rest of it is right here. So with the E L E M, you guys can just go ahead and take your opacity and drop this down to about like 20% or so. As long as you guys can see it, you guys are good to go. And then, then you guys going to have a nice little cool little effect in which the, like the line kind of goes through and kind of separates the, um, I guess you'd say separates the, the text a little bit, gives a nice little, a cool little look to it. Um, shout out to uh, Riot Games, because that's where I found out the uh, the idea from, and I kind of wanted to execute it for myself. I'm just going to call this, like, banner tutorial or something like that, right? I'm just going to, like, shrink this down, something like that. Okay, there we go. Now, last but not least, all I'm going to end up doing is really just taking a new layer right above all the other layers that I'd have. New layer, pressing the rectangle marquee tool, just like so, hovering over the right-hand side here. And then with the same color I use from a foreground color, I'm gonna just use it again, this nice little blue. I can press Alt Backspace. Or if you guys want to, you guys right click, fill when you guys made that box, right? Color and choose whatever color you guys want, which I'm gonna choose this blue. This blue, by the way, is 004545. Press OK, press OK again, right click, deselect. What I'm gonna end up doing is actually taking this layer here and taking it and dragging it below the all the patterns right so now that's below all the patterns it'll actually be shown above the patterns now as well and i can go ahead take my logo now place that bad boy here i would say even white's a little bit hard to see i maybe i might be a black right that looks pretty badass too so what ends up happening is you want to make sure you make kind of like center your text a little bit little i guess a little bit better towards like this all the space being taken you really want to separate or i guess you would say space your text between the black here so it'd be more or less like around here and once you guys are done with that, you guys are done with the tutorial. Cool. So that is basically it. I understand you guys are like, there's a little bit, of, it's a little longer of a video, but you guys, of course, you got to freaking learn it before you guys are able to do it really quickly, right? But once you guys get it down, it's freaking easy peasy by then. And it's like, like I said, it takes a minute, honestly. I promise you, watch. Um, but I'm done to today's video here today. I hope you guys enjoy it so very much. And uh, yeah, I just, I freaking, I actually, I'm looking at this a lot. I'm just like, shit, this is really cool. Should I make another video and just say this for later? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I love it. I hope you guys love it too. Of course, two likes on the video. You can see secret down below, which will be the most likely PSA that you guys see right here today. And uh, yeah, I love you guys so very much. As always, dudes, I just want to say once again, I appreciate you guys so very much for just watching the videos that I want to create sometimes. So I'm doing like the videos that I usually do. And then on like the Wednesdays or something like that, I kind of upload a video that I kind of wanted to do all the time, but I just was scared to kind of do it. Um you guys have been receiving it very, very well. So I thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy your weekend. I hope you guys enjoy the next week. I hope you guys enjoy the next month. If this is the last time you watch my video, um, just to make sure that's not, make sure you guys subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. Since so, so HQ out, gotta get to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys. Later. Much love.